Listen very carefully to what happened to this former Hindu idol worshipper as she was reading the book of Isaiah from the Bible. And for the first time, I started reading the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament out of curiosity to just fight. But as I was reading, you know what happened? I don't know what happened, but the Holy Spirit just transformed me. And for the first time in my life, I got to know that the true living God hates idol worship. I cannot compress this omnipresent God and make him into a statue or an object and worship him and say that you are God. I can't worship what I make from my hand. And I got to know the most important second thing was that this God of the Bible wants to have a personal relationship with me. When I was a Hindu, I used to worship a thousand gods. It is said that in Hinduism, there are 33 crows of gods. And I used to worship so many gods for each and everything. But none of those gods wanted to have a personal relationship with me in my life. But the God of the Bible wanted me to have a personal relationship with him. And I can call this God Abba Father, my dad, my own father. I can share with him anything as I am. She thought she was going to fight a mock God by reading the Bible. But little did she know God transformed her from a Hindu idol worshiper to a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the third most important thing that I got to know is that this God of the Bible does not require any sacrifices. Because when I was a Hindu, I used to do a lot of ritualistic sacrifices. I used to dip myself into Ganges. I need not do that anything. I need not go climb the Himalayas. I need not go to the river Ganges and dip for holiness to wash away and cleanse my sins. But this God sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary while I was still a sinner. So this changed my life. I can just go to him as I am. He does not expect my physical uncleanliness. He expects only my heart, a broken heart. That's what this God wants. So that day, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior when I was in 12th grade. Praise God. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 say, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and on under the earth and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And this will be the final statement about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it will be done in a spirit of worship and utmost reverence. Now the question that I have for you is this, who do you worship? Everyone needs to answer that question. No matter who you are, you worship something or someone. Hindus worship thousands of gods. Muslims worship Allah, Buddhists worship Buddha, spiritualists worship energy and the universe, hedonists worship pleasure, narcissists worship themselves, lovers of money worship money, and the list goes on and on. So it goes without saying that man is a worshiper at heart. Women's chapter 1 verses 21 through 23 say, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their reasonings, and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible mankind, of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Man will either worship the creator God, Yahweh, or he will bow down to created things. In one way or another, those are the only two options. If you are not worshiping the God of the Bible, you are worshiping an idol, a false god. Whether you like it or not, if you are not worshiping Yahweh, the true and living God, you are worshiping a demon. The Bible is our only guide to true worship. We can only offer true worship by knowing who the true God is. The true God revealed himself to us through his creation and his revealed word found on the pages of Holy Scripture. The truth regarding God is exclusive. There can only be one true living and holy God. There can only be one way, one truth, and one true eternal life. 
and it is only and exclusively found in Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John 14 verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And again, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator also between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. If you are outside of Christ, if you are without Christ, then you are lost, bound to your sin and on your way to hell. Many people might take me for an insensitive person for what I just said, but whether you like it or not, the truth is the truth, and only the truth can set you free according to John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And it was the truth of the word of God that set that ex-Hindu idol worshipper woman free. Free from idol worship, free from the lies of the false belief system of Hinduism, which has thousands of false gods which are really demons, and tons of rituals and sacrifices. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That is the power of the word of God. If you take a moment to think about men's heart, according to Jeremiah 17 verse 9, it is deceitful and rebellious above all things. Who can know it if not the one who created it? Then it makes sense that only the words of the one who created the heart can pierce it to its core, convict it of its sin, and transform it from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh, living flesh, and dwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. Only the truth of the word testifies of the true living God. The word of God testifies of the Savior of the world who laid down his life for the remission of our sins. It is only in God's word we will find a caring shepherd for the lost, a healer for the sick, a father for the fatherless, a refuge for the widow and the orphan, a rescuer for the hopeless, a savior for the sinner, a king for those who are without a land and without a name. What other God sacrificed his only begotten son in order to redeem wretched sinners like you and I? What other God has so much care for the world to the degree that he gave his only begotten son because of his love for the world? Tell me what other God other than the God of the Bible describes himself as loving, patient, merciful, and abounding in grace. There is no other God like the God of the Bible. All other gods require people to sacrifice to them. Some sacrifice their life and even their children in some instances. Millions of people are looking for answers and meaning for their life in the wrong places. They are asking gurus for the meaning of life. They are questioning intellectuals about the origin of the universe and seeking answers to what happens after death from new age philosophers. Some try to escape and transcend this world to look for answers but to no avail. Because the answer to life and death lies on the pages of scripture. The author of life, God, gave us this book in order to know him and believe in his son Jesus Christ. And by believing in him, we may have eternal life. He is both man and God, and as man, he knows and understands our passions, our desires, and our weaknesses, and yet without sin, according to Hebrews 4 verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things, just as we are, yet without sin. There are millions of false gods and demons in the world who have deceived millions of people to bow down to them, to offer sacrifice to them, and devote their entire life to them. Those poor souls are servants of demons demons and are on their way to hell. But today, if you are an idol worshipper, a slave to demons, I gotta tell you that there is a man who is sovereign over those idols and demons. As a matter of fact, he conquered all the demons and principalities and the forces of darkness at the cross. He triumphed over them and made a spectacle of them all by his death and his resurrection, and his name is Jesus Christ, and the word of God testifies of him. And in Christ alone you will find life, in Christ alone you will find grace and mercy and eternal hope. Repent of your sin and run to him, don't wait until tomorrow or later, today, right now, is the day of salvation. Come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. And at this moment I would like to invite you to become a supporter and a member of the channel if you like the work that we're doing. You could do that by becoming a member of the channel or by becoming a Patreon member. For our Patreon and channel members, we offer weekly devotional and biblical videos. I will leave links in the description where you can become a member and support our channel. If this is your first time on the channel and you made it this far, well, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in our next video. With love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.